Good morning and welcome back to uh, Marketing ADD. My name is Dylan Meiselwick, owner of Artistic Development and Design, and today I wanted to discuss with you the book called Fanatical Prospecting by Jeb Blount. Uh, I believe that's how you say his last name. But uh, this book in particular is one of the books that got me really moving in my business and ensuring that I wasn't letting my pipelines run dry when it came to prospecting. And one of the uh, key takeaways I got from it was right from the title, Fanatical Prospecting, the concept of constantly trying to uh, look and seek out new uh, clients and new prospects. And the reason for that is that so often the results that you see aren't for, uh, or from po prospecting in general, aren't seen for, you know, 30, 60, or 90 days out. And so whenever you start prospecting, it might feel like nothing's happening and you kind of slow down and then suddenly a, a few months go by and you seem to get a few more leads. And a lot of people just, you know, attribute that to serendipity, but in reality, it's from those reach outs a few months before, uh, quite often that just keeps you in the back of someone's mind and suddenly a few months from then they might remember you. But the objective is to have them always be remembering you, whoever it is that your ideal client is. And so because of that, that's one of the reasons that I promote marketing so much. A lot of people, um, you know, they bunch marketing and advertising together and I like to separate them into the concept of advertising are the paid call to actions like, hey, here is an event, here is, uh, you know, a deal, here is a sale and we want you to come in now and you pay to broadcast that. But marketing is the continual building up of valuable content. For example, this podcast. And by doing that, you're slowly being dripped out into the public at a constant stream rather than a, uh, you know, a flood and then nothing. And so by doing it that way, it's much easier to be remembered and be on the top of mind of your uh, prospects and, and potential customers. So um, one of the things that I wanted to talk about specifically uh, from this book was about the CRM. For, you, for those of you who own small businesses who don't know what a CRM is, a CRM is a customer relationship management and typically it's CRM software. And this is the just the concept of collecting uh, all of the information on people that you're connecting with. Now, this doesn't mean your client list. So say you're a gym owner and you have a list of all the people that currently attend your gym and most likely the ones that used to attend your gym. Th those emails are great to have because then you can stay in contact with your clients. But the issue is that you want to be collecting emails from everybody. You want as many people as possible. And depending on your industry, obviously you want them to be focused. For something like a gym, uh, any email is valuable because anyone can use your gym. If you're a specialized gym, maybe a little more specialized uh, prospect is in order. But the point is that you want to maintain the CRM. It's it, uh, Right off the bat, he talks about the fact that uh, it's one of the most boring topics in this book and that he hates that he even has to talk about it. But then he follows that up by going, there is no weapon or tool in your sales arsenal that is more important or impactful to your long-term income stream than your prospect database. Nothing. And that's what I wanted to uh, bring up because I know a lot of clients that I've worked with, when I mention a CRM, some of them have no idea what I'm talking about or they kind of know what I'm talking about, but they've never really utilized one. And so I would want to, uh, if I could, t uh, you know, put anything out there today for you to think about is to start working on building your prospecting database. Now, whether you have a sales team, or you're a, uh, you know, a solopreneur or a, a small business owner with only a couple employees, it's still very important to have this. Uh, for my CRM, I have, I have uh, HubSpot. It's a free CRM you can use. Uh, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, but it, it's something I came across. It was very valuable. It allowed me to track conversations with people so that like, oh, I've reached out to this person. They're currently working with somebody now. Maybe I'll follow up in a month and see how that's going, right? And then I can potentially get a new client. Uh, if you're a gym owner, for example, if you've been collecting emails this whole time and you're aware that right before the holidays, you know, right after the new year, uh, you know, around Valentine's Day, days like those where 
people are going to go try to get uh, you know, a gym membership. If you're the one that has the emails, then you have the direct connection with them. And the reason that that's much more powerful than having something like uh, you know, paying for a ton of Facebook ads is that it's free. And you can have a direct connection to the customer. And so Facebook ads are great. In fact, I use Facebook ads uh, for many of my clients. And one of the things that I use them for is lead generation and capturing emails. Because those emails are going to be much more powerful in the long run. So, you know, if you're going to be working on growing your business and you want to stay there for the long term, then capturing emails and building a CRM database working with uh, or following up with prospects and clients to ensure that you're constantly providing value. Uh, that would definitely be one of the you know greatest things you can do for your business. So I hope that helps. I hope you learned something today uh, and thanks for stopping by.